Hello, my lovely people. So many of you know that I have written three angel books. These are novels. And if you love a good romance, a good laugh, a good giggle, and you love everything that's spiritual and universal and angelic, you're going to love these books. It's a trilogy of three books and it starts off with Sarah in her mid-30s with a chaotic life in book one. And by the time we get to the end of book one, she's sorted and happy. Book two, Angel in My Heart, sees the relationships develop as she grows up and older into her 40s. And book three, Angel in My Fingers, sees her develop and grow even more with the angels all around them and her family all of the time. And so I thought, well, you don't know anything about my book, so I'm going to give you a little prologue. Following on from Angel on My Shoulder Sarah's story, Sarah is finally having a good day. At 38 and three quarters, life is now going fantastically. She's just married her soulmate Simon, her store is doing great, and she's even getting on with her mother. Miracles really do happen. And to top it all, she's pregnant. Her guardian angel Clarabel is, of course, smashingly happy. But is she risking it all with her crush on Archangel Michael? How will Simon cope with finding out that his new wife has a guardian angel that she can see and talk to? Will Nathaniel ever sort out his gone care? And what will Metatron do when he finds out about Clarabelle's crush? Will she be banished from the angelic realms forever? In this sequel, Angel in My Heart, Clarabelle's story, it is Sarah's turn to help her angelic best friend Clarabelle and prevent a disaster. Can she do it? Enter Fred the Fantastic to save the day. Fred is, of course, Sarah and Simon's new dog, a golden retriever, who, being a genius, can speak three languages, dog, angel and human. Whether he can help Mum and Auntie Clarabelle sort the mess out that they've got themselves into, though, is quite another matter. Clarabelle sat on cloud 362 singing. Someday my prince will come, someday we'll meet again, and away to his castle we'll go, to be forever happy, I know. Gosh, she just loved Snow White, just loved it. Someday when spring is here, she warbled on merrily, we'll find our love anew, and the birds will sing, and wedding bells will ring. Someday when my dreams come true. A huge, stupid grin was plastered all over her beautiful face as she contemplated the extraordinary events of yesterday at the awards ceremony. Had the mighty Archangel Michael really stroked her feathers and been a little suggestive with her? She knew she had fainted at the pure pleasure of it, right into his arms, of course. How utterly wonderful! Clarence wasn't amused, though, that was clear. Her brother had hardly said a word since the momentous event. Sulking. Typical brother. Bless. He'll come round eventually, although it may take some time. That was clear. Clarence was old school angel first class and didn't believe it right or proper that she had a crush on Archangel Michael. A.A. Mickey, as she liked to call him. Ideas above her station, Clarence had said. Metatron won't like it, Clarence had said. And it wasn't right, Clarence had said. What was she thinking, Clarence had said. Well, tough. If her mighty A.A. Mickey wanted to stroke her feathers, he could, and that was that. And OK, so she might get in trouble with Metatron, but she couldn't really see how. Really, he wasn't that bad as bosses go, not really. He could be a bit stern, being in charge of all the angels and the voice of God and all that but she was just sure he'd be fine with it, just fine. And anyway, she hadn't glowed like this for eons, and she'd never seen her halo so bright, so there couldn't be anything wrong with that now, could there? 
Okay, she admitted to herself, so it wasn't exactly normal for angels to have inter angelsy relations up here. And okay, so yes, she'd never actually heard of an angelic wedding. But you never knew, there was always a first time. And besides, the angelic temple would make a super wedding venue. Clarabel glowed as she thought back. She had first met A.A. A. Mickey about a year ago when they had called an inter angelsy meeting to discuss her Sarah. All very serious stuff. She had never met a proper archangel before and had just been overawed by his beauty, majesty, power and downright wonderfulness. Not to mention that battle dress, that sword and those wings. <gasps> She'd been dumbstruck for days. Oh my goodness, he was just so handsome. There had been all the normal guardian angels present, of course, as well as the two archangels that they called in for extra help, A.A.'s Michael and Uriel. Uriel was lovely, of course, but he was no Michael. Michael, well, he was just something else. That meeting had been the best day ever. She had been struggling so much to get Sarah on the right track that reinforcements had had to be called for and it had worked. Oh my, how it had worked. Just 15 months ago, Sarah had been a single 37-year-old spinster of the parish, a string of rubbish men and rubbish jobs behind her, with no clue of how to go forward, and of course, totally resistant from any help from her guardian angel, Clarabel, whose job it was to guide and assist her. Clarabel thought back to last year with a smile. Sarah had been such a mess, bless her. Just terrible self-esteem, zero self-worth and life was going nowhere fast for her. She had a terrible relationship with her mother, a chaotic life and nothing of any worth to look forward to. When she had finally surrendered, that fateful day in the spring of last year, allowing Clarabel to guide her at last, it had been the best day ever. Over the following months, they'd worked hard to sort out her worth, her esteem, her career, and finally, when she was strong enough, her mother. When all of that was done, Sarah had at last been ready for real love, and it had come in as soulmate Simon. The rest, as they say down there, is history. In the making, of course, but history nevertheless. There was Sarah now, laying on a beach in the Maldives, on a honeymoon with Simon, their hands entwined as they lay together, soaking up the sun on the Paradise Island. Clarabel could feel the love and the joy radiating out from them right up here, all the way to cloud 362. It was so powerful, their love, it was just lovely. And she just knew that they were all going to live happily ever after. Mind you, she thought, it had been hard work getting Sarah there, getting her ready. But with all the angels working together, and with a bit of help from her Mickey, of course, it had all worked out in the end. Clarabel peeked down over the cloud towards the beach far below them on planet Earth and beamed. Not their usual cloud 322 overlooking Redfields where Sarah and Simon lived. This one, cloud 362, was halfway around the other side of the world overlooking the Paradise Island where the happy couple were honeymooning. The tropical sun was shining brightly down onto the white sand while the turquoise sea lapped gently at the shore, their gentle waves soothing the happy couple as they half dozed on their sunbeds. Hands entwined, they lay together happily in their bliss. Ah, oh, it was just lovely to watch them bless. She was chuffed about the baby too. How exciting. They would be delighted, of course, Sarah and Simon, when they found out. Both had wanted children for ages, but without the right partner and the right life, it just couldn't happen. Now, of course, it was different. All was in place and ready, and the angels could finally move things forward. Plans had been underway for the additional two souls to join them, although admittedly there had been a long delay, longer than anticipated. They'd been due several years earlier, but Sarah hadn't been ready for Simon, so practically the entire angelic realms had had to work together to move heaven and earth in order to stall the arrivals. Now it was finally the right time. Although with Sarah nearly 39 and Simon coming 41, they needed to move fast. 
Angelica would be the first, of course, baby number one, followed by baby number two in a year or so, a son. That had been a close call, boy or girl first. She and Clarence had argued about it for ages before deciding to toss a feather for it. He, of course, wanting a boy first, being a typical male, but she had won, smashing. (laughs) So a girl it was. Angelica was on her way, forming nicely inside Sarah at this very moment. Anyway, Clarabel thought it wasn't really Clarence's place to be interfering like that, and she had argued with him for an age over it. After all, it was Nathaniel who was Simon's angel, and it should have been down to her and Nat to sort it out, but Clarence had jumped in, insisting. To be fair, if it wasn't for Clarence, they wouldn't be all where they were now. And anyway, she'd won the feather toss. (laughs) Ha! Sarah herself didn't have a clue yet, of course, that she was pregnant, but she'd find out soon enough. When she did, Clarabel would be there for her as ever with her pearls of wisdom and support. After all, that was her job. She was Sarah's very own personal guardian angel. Thinking about the baby that was due in eight and a half months, Clarabel beamed. She was looking forward to working with Serafina, who'd been allocated to be baby Angelica's guardian angel. Her training and preparation were already underway and Clarabel knew she'd be working closely with her for the rest of Sarah and Angelica's lives. With a rustle of feathers to her left, she suddenly saw Nathaniel join her. They grinned as they watched the two lovebirds below. She and Nat had been working hard over the last year to bring the two soulmates together and it hadn't always gone smoothly, particularly their first meeting which had been nothing short of a disaster. But then again, it rarely ever did go smoothly with humans. The two angels sat chatting about the wedding, which had been wonderful, just wonderful. Clarabel had loved being bridesmaid and Nat was chuffed to bits at being best man, standing next to Simon proudly. His bright orange gonk hair had even behaved and he'd been able to leave the cap that he usually wore to hide it behind for once. Sarah had walked down the aisle of the beautiful chapel looking radiant on her brother's arm, followed by Clarabel and Clarence, of course. Clarence was Clarabel's brother, mentor and saviour, bless him. Well, normally, anyway, although he really was giving us such a hard time over this Mickey thing at the moment. It was most unlike him to be a pain, most unlike him indeed, very out of character. Clarabel's thoughts were darting back and forth without rhyme or reason at the moment. Now where was she? Ah yes, the wedding. Clarence had followed Ben down the aisle, making sure his ward didn't mess up as he gave his sister away. He was Ben's guardian angel, so it was a nice family occasion all round. Brother and sister angels looking after brother and sister humans. Lovely, just lovely. Lovely day, lovely day, she beamed again. Just lovely. Clarabel beamed at the memory of Sarah walking down the aisle on Ben's arm. She was so lucky to have such a lovely relationship with her brother, wishing for a moment that her own brother was as supportive. Now, Clarabel, you know I'm always there for you. How can you even think that? A stern voice with a hint of hurt suddenly declared from behind her. He'd been watching her quietly for some time but she had been so wrapped up in her dreamy state about Archangel Michael and her chattering to Nathaniel about the wedding that she hadn't noticed him at all. He smiled sadly at his little sister and shook his head. He'd been mentoring her for 20 years now, helping and supporting her to guide Sarah towards the right path and had pulled more than a string or two on her behalf. To say, to even think that I don't support her is just so unfair. Just because I think this little crush you have on Archangel Michael is inappropriate does not mean that I don't support you, he said indignantly. Quite unfair of you, Clara, quite unfair. And he sat down in a huff. Oh, stop sulking, Clarence, she grinned. She knew he'd never understand her feelings for Mickey, himself never having put a foot wrong in all of his 7,000 years of angelic existence. Not that she was admitting that she was doing anything wrong, mind you, but okay, possibly it wasn't quite normal for angels to have crushes on each other. She looked at him carefully, scrutinising his perfection. It was all right for Clarence, she decided. Never risked his halo, did Clarence. Never put a foot wrong, did Clarence. 
But that being said, she was lucky to have him and she knew it. She'd never have managed to get her Sarah sorted without him. And he was a darling, really. Just a bit old-fashioned. Bless. Suddenly, all three jumped with a start as a dark figure flew past them at speed, descending towards downstairs, trailing a long-cloaked shadow of blackness behind him. Hi, Fred! Clarabelle shouted after the figure, waving. Fred zoomed past, waving back, leaving a cloud shaking as he passed. Speed in again, Fred, Nat shouted after him. You'll get done one of these days, mate, and then you'll be stuffed. Will he ever learn, exclaimed Clarence crossly. They were all the same, these grim reapers, always speeding in their rush to get their quota filled. I know there's pressure down there in transport to meet targets, but really, can you not at least try to keep within the speed limits, he grumbled, smoothing his ruffled feathers down in annoyance. Seconds later, Fred zoomed past again, this way on his way to upstairs, creating the same shockwave as he did the first time. Cloud 362 shook violently, and Clarabel had to hang on to it so as not to fall off. Fred, really, they called together. Must you? Hi, both, shouted Fred as he flew past them. Come on, you, he shouted, looking behind him at the trailing angel. We haven't got all day, you know. He nodded towards the retrieved soul of the recently departed that he was carrying. Have to get this one upstairs. I've got loads more to collect today. I don't want to miss my quota. The trailing angel flew faster, wanting to stay with her ward that was going home. She was trying her best to catch them up, but these grim reapers, blimey, they just flew so blinking fast, she thought to herself. Then all of a sudden, Fred yanked the brakes on and whipped around, doubling back to the three angels sitting on cloud 362. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, guys, I'm going off grid for a while. Got a mission. Don't know what, he grinned. What? Where you going, Fred? asked Clarabelle. Don't know, mate. Just know the boss has reassigned me. Something to do with my PDP. Just wanted to say ta-da. He waved a dark, shadowy arm and then he was gone trailing the black mist behind him again as he zoomed off upstairs with his delivery. What did his PDP say then? asked Clarabelle, wondering what could be so bad in a personal development plan that an angel of death would be reassigned. She didn't particularly care for the Grim Reapers as a whole, a bit too calculating and clinical for her liking. She knew that Fred had been in trouble for being a bit too gung-ho with his collections, but she'd gotten used to him over the years, speeding and zooming in and out as he collected the departed. She knew that a few of the guardian angels had complained about the way he collected his ward so roughly. There had been several complaints here and there, and they'd all reflected in Fred's PDP quite badly. I think it was something about the way he carts them off a bit quick, too businesslike or something, Nat said. That's what I heard anyway. Bit too harsh is Fred, even for a grim reaper. I heard on the grapevine that he's got some training to do, apparently. Ooh, that's almost a demotion, isn't it? Clarabelle asked with alarm. Not at all, reassured Clarence. It's just a matter of softening up a bit, that's all. He'll be fine. The boss knows what he's doing, don't you, Fred, dear? Clarabelle, Clarence and Nat watched Fred go, all thinking the same thing, that they'd hate to be in transport like Fred, just hate it. They all loved their gu- their jobs as guardian angels as much as each other. I couldn't work in transport, Nat, be a grim reaper. Could you? asked Clarabelle, thinking what a chore it must be up and down all day, collecting souls that had passed on, transporting them to upstairs, unloading them, then back down again for more. So boring! No, mate, never, replied Nat. Couldn't do it, just couldn't. I wonder what they have to do to get promoted, to get out of there and be like us, she asked curiously. Not a clue, mate, not a clue, Nat shook his head. He wasn't the brightest spark in the realms, he knew that. Still had loads to learn, same as Clarabelle. He was surprised that Clarence didn't know, though. Clarence usually knew everything. The three pondered the promotions and demotions that were known to happen within the angelic realms for a few moments, happy in their jobs, wondering how it all worked in the other classes like the Grim Reapers. Then they returned their attention to the couple below. 
She's going to burn if she's not careful, Clarabelle worried, noticing Sarah was turning rather an alarming shade of pink as she lay on the white sand, the tropical sun blazing down onto her fragile skin. You know their skin is more susceptible to the sun when they're pregnant. Clara, she's got fat to 150 or something on, mate. She'll be fine, Nat assured. Just fine, honest, mate. Simon's plastered it on her. I made sure of that, he grinned. Yes, but she's pregnant now. It's different, she worried. Won't it be just lovely when she finds out about the baby? She declared happily, not for the first time. She turned to her brother, giggling not able to resist rubbing in the victory she had over him of the girl coming first. Just lovely a girl, I won, I won, she crooned, taking out the winning feather from her sparkly golden belt and waving it in the air in front of Clarence's nose. A girl, a girl, she grinned, smashing. Clarence watched his sister with concern. Her light was far too bright and her halo was glowing all over the place. She was getting ideas above her station, so she was. Between winning the feather toss and thinking she could possibly have a romantic venture with another angel and an archangel at that, well, it was just all getting out of hand and she was only a second-class angel. This crush she had really had to be nipped in the bud and quickly and crowing about winning the feather toss, rubbing it in his face like that, most unbecoming of a second-class angel. It was time she was put back in her place. I'm off, he humphed, his mission now clear in his mind. She wasn't going to like what he was going to do next. Oh, not one little bit, but she'd asked for it. He left her to carry on watching the happy honeymooning couple far below, deciding that he had an urgent appointment that needed making, and making immediately. Clarence flew off, picking up the jet stream that Fred had left in his wake. Time to sort this out, he declared firmly to himself. Right, oh then, Nat, I'm popping off, said Clarabelle, standing up from cloud 362, stretching. Off to see Sarah. Wanna come? Now you're all right, mate. Too hot down there for me. I don't know how you stand the heat. Makes my feathers sticky, it does. I'll wait till they get back home to normal climate conditions tomorrow. Not programmed for the subtropics, me. Not at all. Do me a favour and keep an eye on Simon, though, would you? If he needs anything, give me a shout. But I think he's fine for now. I'm off for a harp lesson. Nathaniel grinned and then suddenly remembered the meeting the following day. Oh, Haven't we got a meeting with Serafina to fill her in on the background of those two tomorrow, he asked, nodding towards the happy couple far below. She needs to be brought up to speed now that she's been allocated to baby Angelica, doesn't she? Clarabelle nodded her agreement emphatically. She was looking forward to filling Sefi in on the details and history that was Sarah and Simon. Such a lovely story. Righto then, see you tomorrow. Ta-ra for now. Nathaniel waved as he flew off upstairs, leaving Clarabelle poised for takeoff to downstairs and their wards, although he wondered why she was so bothered. Sarah was so sorted now, there was really little for Clarabelle to do, but he knew she'd find something. Couldn't sit still for two minutes, that one. Things to do, things to do, Clarabelle trilled and flew down to catch up with the latest news from Sarah, singing her favourite song of the moment as she zoomed down, her song from Snow White. What was it that Mr Disney had said? All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Yes, indeedy, decided Clarabelle, thinking about her Mickey again. Smashing. She sang loudly and clearly, her song carrying across the sky as she flew, wings outstretched, grinning serenely. Someday my prince will come. Sarah was in the hotel bathroom when Clarabelle reappeared fresh from her visit to Cloud 362 and her chat with Nathaniel and Clarence. The cool marble luxury shone all around her as she cleaned her teeth in its plush sink. One of two matching ones, a his and a hers. The enormous bath with its gold taps and jacuzzi jets commanded the room and stood majestically in front of the enormous windows overlooking its amazing views of the Indian Ocean. 
Sarah grinned, loving the opulence of the honeymoon suite. Clarabelle dove in as always, giving Sarah a start as she got straight to the point, piping up into her nagging without even saying hello. Have you told him yet, dear? About me, I mean. You were going to tell him, right after Christmas, then Easter, and then before the wedding, and now here we are on your honeymoon. Two weeks you've had, and you promised me that you'd tell him. So, she stared at Sarah encouragingly, is it done? <sighs> Hello, Clarabelle. Long time no see. Must be at least half an hour. How did you manage that? Sarah grinned, putting the toothbrush down and moving over to the toilet. Now, dear, don't change the subject. Not a good sign, not a good sign. So, have you told him? Told him? Eh? Eh? Ah, uh, well, no, not quite, admitted Sarah sheepishly to a concerned Clarabelle, sitting perched on the toilet roll holder, watching Sarah as she sat on the loo in the luxury bathroom of her honeymoon suite. I didn't want to spoil anything. It's our honeymoon, she defended. Seeing Clarabelle's eyebrows rise at the admission, she rushed in, continuing her defence. I was waiting for the right time and... It just hasn't appeared yet. Honest. Sarah noticed Clarabelle's sceptical face, the set determined mouth, and she knew that she'd be nagged into submission sooner or later. Sure enough, the advice, lecture, interference, or whatever anyone wanted to call it, began in earnest. Fear does not become you, Sarah, dear. You know that he loves you. He's going nowhere, I promise you. There is nothing to fear in telling the truth. The truth will set you free. How many times have I told you this? Nagged Clarabelle happily. It had taken her over half of Sarah's life to get her to the point of granting Clarabelle permission to guide her, and now that she had the said permission, she just loved these little opportunities to interfere, relished them in fact. She watched Sarah squirm with some concern, but not too much. Yes, well, Claire, it's easier said than done, admitting to your brand new husband that you have a guardian angel called Clarabelle, who sits on your shoulder most of the time, is about six inches tall, and who you see and talk to every day. He'll have me locked up. He will not have you locked up, Sarah, and you know it. He may be a little, how do you say, freaked out by it all, but he will get over it and he will get used to it. Secrets and lies are not good between a couple you know. Breathe doubts, and before you know it, those doubts have grown into more. And lies, well, they just grow and grow, and on it goes. OK, OK, don't nag, and I don't lie. Well, not much, and only when I have to. She saw Clarabelle's left eyebrow rise again at precisely the moment that Simon called out through the closed door to her. You OK in there, babe? Sounds like you're talking to someone. Yourself again, or have you got a strange man in there that I don't know about? Simon laughed from the other side of the bathroom door. Singing, darling, just singing. Won't be long. Be out soon. Sarah didn't want to look at Clarabelle's face to see the triumph in her eyes at this little, nay, minute, tiny weeny lie, but she couldn't avoid it as Clarabelle bent over towards her, sticking her face right under Sarah's nose as she grinned and said, So, you don't lie to him, eh? Hmm, of course you don't. What was that then, eh? Eh? OK, OK, you win. I've been putting it off long enough, I know. I'll tell him when we get home, I promise. But you'd better be there with some help when I do. This is going to freak him out big time. But of course, child, of course I'll be there, aren't I always? Mm, I guess so. She watched Clarabelle's face as it changed from scepticism to disbelief and corrected her statement quickly. Yes, yes, you're always there, I know, sorry. And I will be there for you when you tell him, and it will all be fine, I promise, she reassured a clearly reluctant Sarah. Thank you. Now could you please get off the toilet roll holder so that I can get out of here, she laughed. Go on, shoo. See you when I get home. Go and play in a cloud or something. And Claire, enjoy your flight, and with any luck I'll enjoy mine too, and there won't be too much turbulence. 
I'll make sure of it, my dear. You just leave it to me, beamed Clarabel, popping off upstairs to order some calm weather for the next morning and the return flight of the newlywed Mr and Mrs S and S Brown. She'd do her best to make it as perfect as possible for them both and with any luck, she might even bump into A.A. Mickey upstairs on her way to the weather station. (laughs) Smashing, she beamed. Just smashing! Smashing!